welcome back. There might be a little noise from the heater. Hopefully that's not too annoying. I gotta get the balancer painted that I forgot about. But we're gonna do valve springs today. I got the new springs here. So I'm gonna do them two at a time. I'll take these two rockers off, do these two springs, put these rockers back on, do these two rockers. So um, I'll take them off and I'll keep them in order. I don't wanna mix them up. But that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take those off. Then, pardon my unreadiness here, I have this tool right here. It threads onto the rocker stud, like so. Push the handle down, it goes more like this. Push the handle down, pushes the spring down, take the keepers out, change the spring. But while that's going on, one of these ends will be threaded into the spark plug hole and then um, holding the air in the cylinders, holding these valves from opening when I push the tool down. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna figure out which one I need. Um, get that in here, get the tool on, and then I will catch you guys when I have everything set up. I'll show you how to do one of them. Then I'm gonna do them all, get them all done. So we can get this intake on, get the distributor in and Alrighty, I have the tool in the spark plug hole for the air um, to hold the cylinder or to hold the valves up. Then I have my tool on here. It's got a long handle on it to push down on the valve. Um, I'm gonna put air to it, push down on the valve, get the keepers out, pull the uh, spring retainer out, pull a spring off, replace the valve seal, put the new spring on, the new keepers on, and then switch over to the next one. I might get kind of loud. I don't know how much air is gonna air noise is gonna hiss, but uh, it'll it will turn the engine over a little bit. It'll bring it from top dead center to bottom dead center. But I'm gonna show this one on camera, and then we'll buzz through the next ones after I do this one. So I'm gonna get the air hooked up here. Well, they weren't stick, stuck too bad. There's one. There's two. It goes over there. Alrighty. Then, it's hard to see, but I'm going to make sure the valve seal is loose. Oh, yeah, she's all crudded up. Yep, she's broke. So that's why it smoked a little bit when I would start it. take this one out of here the old ones you can take off right away but the new ones you got to put in before you put the spring in and stuff slowly take that off turn this off to the side there's the valve the spring keeper and here's the spring i wish i had a spring uh pressure checker or whatever you call them to check the pressures now as compared to then take my new seal Ooh, there's some gunk on there. This does take a lot of air. All right, I'm back. And then the seal goes on the second notch. Keeper.
get this tool off. Grab my hammer and just make sure. Make sure it's good. She's all good. It ain't going anywhere. So that's how you change your valve spring and your valve seal.
right, so now it's time to adjust the rocker arms. So I made up a little diagram here. Um, I don't know how well it's going to be to see. I'll hold it up to my book here so it doesn't, so it's not see-through. You guys can pause this, screenshot it, whatever you want for yourselves. So real quick, I'll kind of explain a little bit. Top dead cylinder, cent, top dead center for uh, cylinder number one. These are the rocker arms you can adjust. Top dead cylinder for cil cylinder number six. These are the rocker arms you can adjust. The intake valves I have marked with a squiggly line. The exhaust valves I have marked with a straight line. And I also have every set of valves numbered the way they should be. This being the front of the motor. So like you're, you're looking at the motor, you're standing here. Um, make note of that. This is the front of the motor right here, the front. So let me, let me even write that on here. There. Now it's been made note of, you guys know what you're looking at. So that's a little diagram I made. Now I'm gonna show you how to do that. So this process might get a little winded, but it is what it is. So first, I gotta move some stuff, and then we'll start on cylinder number one. All right, so I got my crank socket now. I'm not gonna set that there, that was a bad idea. So is what we're gonna be looking for. Watch these lifters here and here. This first one is the exhaust valve. And the other, the second one is the intake valve. Okay, exhaust opens, intake opens. Kaboom, there's compression. In exhaust is starting to open. All right, so now I'm gonna back it up so the exhaust closes. Boom, that should be top dead center right there. Now, just to be sure, I have a balancer from another 76 motor, because currently the balancer for this motor is being painted. So, is what I'm doing is I'm setting it on here so the crank sprocket lines up. Looking in the cylinder, the piston is top dead center. Um, if you don't, you can use the method I showed you right away at the beginning with just backing it off till the exhaust lobe is gone. Is what that's ensuring, that's ensuring you that, let me grab this camshaft here for an example. That's ensuring you that for example, you're on these two lobes, right? These two lobes are up in the air. That's ensuring you that those lifter bores or the lifters are on the flats of the lobes. Cause you don't want to do a valve lash way up here and way up here. You want to do them when you're way down here. So that's all that's ensuring you by turning it, turning it so the exhaust lifter closes. So what I just did now is I put the balancer on the end of the crankshaft and I turned it over so the line was lined up with top dead center. So I'm at true top dead center right now. So like I said earlier, when you're on top dead center of exhaust or on top dead center of cylinder number one, you can do exhaust one, three, four, eight and intake two, five, seven. So I'm actually going to leave that up there because that's going to help me because I don't have that great a memory. So I can do intake and exhaust. One, three, okay, I'm on the right one. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go until there's zero lash. So you go and you check, you check how much your rocker arm is coming off the valve. That's your lash, right? So I'm gonna go, I got a ways to go yet here, so bear with me. Keep checking it. Oh, too far. 
Okay, I'm gonna back her off a little bit. Okay, there's, there's play there. You might not be able to see it as well as I can see it because I'm able to feel it as well. There's still some play there. It's a little bit tight, a little bit. Okay, there's some play there, ever so slightly. Some play yet. That feels like zero lash. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this. I'm gonna set this at um probably a half. So it's what I mean by that is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna find a good spot. Sorry if the light's in the way. I'll hold it. Find a good spot. So I'm gonna line up my ratchet with the rocker and I'm gonna go halfway tight. That's half. So that's half a turn. Setting my lash. You can probably, you might not be able to see it, but the lifter is collapsed. It's not collapsed, but it's pushed in a little bit. So I'm gonna do half on all of these. Like I said, I'll go off of them. And I'm gonna catch you guys when I'm on top dead center of number six. All right, so I got the motor rolled over to top dead center on the cylinder number six. And we're gonna do the exhaust intake on those valves for the intake and exhaust. And then once that's done, we're gonna put the intake in, the distributor in, and the valve covers in. So I got all the valves adjusted, but there's something that's a little concerning here. I want to show you guys just in case it pops up again. Look at the amount of threads there, 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 you know, and then look at this one. Now, if you guys remember, which you may not, I wish I had the clip to play it. These two rocker arms were the ones not moving. Well, one was moving, one wasn't. These were the two rocker arms that were having issues with the cam being bad because of the cam lobe. This rocker arm was not moving at all. And this one was sitting and then it would, it would uh, jump up and then open the valve. So it was jumping, jumping and opening it. So I'm concerned that this stud is pulling out of the cylinder head. Now I know that's pretty hard to do with a stock um motor nothing done to it but you never know it could happen so i'm gonna run it like this i'm not concerned to run it like this it's my motor for me so i'll take the chance but we might have a re uh, an occurring issue a reoccurring issue in the future here with this rocker arm so just keep that in mind um when you're looking at them to double check and see anything visually so now i'm going to put some assembly lube on the the push rods and the rocker arms and the lifters i mean um just to give them a little bit of extra and then uh other than that we're gonna put the intake on here and close everything up As you've seen, I snugged all four corners so the intake would be held down. 
not moving the gasket. And then with an open end wrench, since you can't get a good grip on an open end wrench and it's hard on a guy's hands, I went as tight as I could with an open end wrench, working my way from the inside out. All right, so you guys can see this from, from the perspective of, of if you were doing this in a truck or a car. So right here, we got the distributor, obviously, right? So you got your rotor, it spins your wheel, and then you got your vacuum. So is what I like to do, which I found really easy. If you point your rotor at number one, and your vacuum, and number six, that's a pretty good spot. Now you gotta remember the cam has got, the cam gear has got turned, it's a turned gear, it's not a straight cut. So you kinda gotta turn the rotor, you gotta turn the rotor into the cam, if you know what I mean, as you're setting it down. So you're gonna wanna start a little further away from one. Now this is on top dead center. Oh, I gotta get my gasket, pardon me. You can only do this on top dead center. If you're doing it elsewhere, you take the distributor out the way you put it in, that makes it a lot harder. I might have to get a big screwdriver here, but, so as you can see, my rotor, okay, we gotta point this at six. My rotor is not at number one, right? So, now this being a new cam, this is gonna be kinda picky, I'm sure. Of course, the oil, the oil pump isn't lined up. So this being tricky, if you look at the oil pump shaft and which way it should be, it's a little ways off. But as what you can do, here's a little trick now. All right, so say you're, say you're trying to put it in right here. Now you guys can't see this, which I'll show you. I'm trying to put the distributor in. It's not going all the way in, right? Here's a little trick I learned. Take the distributor out, a tooth, drop it in one tooth, drop it in another tooth, and another one, and another one. If you keep dropping it in these teeth like this, hope I'm explaining this well. You lift it up and drop it in the next tooth and keep turning it. Eventually, the oil shaft will pick up. Okay. Okay. As what as what I was trying to explain is you're supposed to be able to jump it one tooth and then when it goes down like this every quarter of a rotor turn it'll actually turn the oil pump drive shaft so by the time theoretically by the time you get back around the one it will turn the oil pump drive shaft just right so it falls in but i think i got an issue with the oil pump drive shaft so i'm going to pull this distributor and figure that out and then i'll catch back in i'll touch back all right, I got the distributor in. So the issue was the oil pump shaft has a little bit of play in it. I wish I could show you. It has a little bit of play in it, and it was just, the motor was just sitting just right that it was so far over that the uh, distributor wasn't actually lining up with the oil pump shaft. I happened to resorting to um, turning the oil pump shaft or the screwdriver and messing with that. But as you can see, the vacuum towards number six or towards this bolt hole here and this one, towards the front bolt hole or cylinder number one. So, and you can set your cap on and find number one on your on your cap and set it on and see how that lines up. So that's gonna be pretty dang close. Hopefully it's not a tooth off, but I doubt it. So now I'm gonna get the valve covers on and once those are on, I'll probably put the water neck on because they're pretty, the water neck is pretty self-explanatory. So let's get to it. So I actually have to paint the valve cover bolts yet which I didn't realize, so while they're drying, I'm going to be putting in 
the vacuum modulator for the transmission, the vacuum shift modulator line for the transmission, the uh, barb for the heater core. I got to put tape on it yet. And um, I got a Edelbrock intake plug kit uh, for these other ones because I won't be using these other ones. So I'm going to get them swapped while the other stuff is drying. Then that other stuff won't be dry yet, so I'll be putting in the carburetor studs. Um, and then hopefully that other stuff will be dry by then. that's as far as we're gonna get today I was hoping I could have got a lot more done today but it is what it is so um, at the time of filming this tomorrow will be the day before Thanksgiving and I have some family stuff going on so that will be Wednesday the 24th um, so you guys will get a video on the 24th which will be tomorrow because I'll edit this video and get it up for tomorrow but you won't get one on Thanksgiving and you probably won't get one the day after because um, the day before Thanksgiving, I got some family stuff going on. And on Thanksgiving, obviously, I got some family stuff going on. So I won't be able to make another video until Friday night and then upload it for Saturday. So it'll probably be a little bit till you guys get a video, but that's okay because I'm sure you guys will be spending time with your families as well. Um, that being said... That'll be a wrap today. We got the valve springs in. We got the intake on. I wanted to get the valve covers on, but the uh, bolts and hold downs for the valve covers, I didn't have painted. My fault. Oh, well. Um, in the next video, we'll throw those on. And once we get the valve covers on, I just got to throw the lift plate on and, oh, and the harmonic balancer. And other than that, then it's ready to go in. So we got a lot done today, though. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I don't even know what part it is on the C20, but we're almost there. We're almost there. Once the C20 is done, we'll either be working on the brown truck or the cam swap on the LS. Um, so there's plenty more content to come. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think of my videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one.